Alright, this is the Insights Channel. Steve here again. Yep, now I'm feeling a lot better now. Tell you what I've thought for this new year 2024. I thought it might be good if I give a synopsis or summary introduction to each of my books. The summary to this one, this is the first book of Jasher, is uh, just a few pages long, but it's very it's very intense and therefore I think it's you'd find it interesting. So this is taken from my Insights book, Jasher Insights book one. And as I said here, Synopsis, Summary, Introduction, May 2019. Referred to in Joshua, the book of Joshua in the Bible and 2 Samuel, faithfully translated from the original Hebrew into English. And as is mentioned in the book of Joshua, is this not written in the book of Joshua? Joshua. And then... Behold, it is written in the book of Joshua, 2 Samuel 1.18. Right. So, this is the apocryphal book of Joshua. It's a translation of a Hebrew book printed in 1613 called Sepia Ha Yasha. The Hebrew title, I notice it was printed up there into English, around about the same time as the King James Bible, which was printed in 1611. This is 1613, that the book of Joshua was printed up. And it means the book of the upright, or the upright or correct record. This text covers much of the same ground as the traditional mosaic books of the Bible, from the creation of the world to the death of Moses, albeit with several minor variations. Well, that is what is normally written above the book of Joshua. It is very important to state that the above-mentioned original Hebrew copy of the book of Joshua was actually written in pre-Christian times and eventually was translated into English in the early 1600s, printed in 1613. From what I've studied, the original book of Joshua, which is a history book, was originally assembled and written in the time of Joshua, 3,500 years ago. And for the source that you can look up, the biblefacts.org. Unfortunately, the above traditional description does not do justice to this amazing book of Joshua. First of all, I'd like to state that I personally, from much study of the book of Joshua, certainly believe that this book is an inspired writing, although I think that in parts of the book, the stories have been somewhat embellished, and some of the dates are different than either the Bible or the Septuagint version of the Old Testament. It is likely that the original book of Joshua, as clearly mentioned in the Old Testament of the Bible, has been either altered or tampered with. Nevertheless, it's still an excellent book to read. See a lot more about this in the appendix of this book. Second Peter 1.21 for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Secondly, the above statement, this text covers much of the same ground as the traditional mosaic books of the Bible, from the creation of the world to the death of Moses, albeit with several minor variations, this is somewhat understated. The book of Joshua, in fact, gives a lot more background information to many of the Bible stories than even the Bible itself does. The book of Joshua also brings out the supernatural powers of God much more than the Bible does. For example, as manifested to the sons of Israel, or Jacob's sons, in their constant wars to rid the lands of Shem, of the Canaanites, and other enemies. In comparing with the Bible, the book of Joshua describes in great detail about the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, and the origins of evil. It also talks about Canaan as the first person to write things down, and later his great-grandson Enoch, from before the Great Flood, also writes things down on tablets of stone. We will read the infamous Genesis 6 episode in greater detail in this book of Joshua. Than even the Bible. Genesis 6 2. 
that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and he took them wives of all which they chose. Genesis 6, 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. Also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. In the time of Jared, the father of Enoch, 200 of the watcher class of angels descended to earth on Mount Hermon in rebellion against God. What was so special about these watcher class angels? In this book I'll explain about it in detail. One of the reasons for the fall of watchers was that they said they wanted to have their own wives and children. Well, that is what most writers of Gen 6 say. But was that the real reason? Find out in this book. The fallen angels made love to the beautiful women on earth, but who was seducing whom? Read all about this in this book. You can also read much more about this topic in my book, Enoch Insights. In this gruesome and grisly, in this book, gruesome and grisly giants are born from the offspring of the disobedient fallen angels and human women. There are many types of giants which are also of different heights, all incredibly dangerous. What are the possibilities of these same monsters, giants, returning one day? You can find a possible answer to that question in this book. How big were these giants? Read on to find out. Why did the giants become grotesquely grisly cannibals who were terrorizing the inhabitants of the earth in pre-flood times? This book of Jasher portrays Enoch as a sort of king of kings for 243 years. It also talks a lot about Nimrod and Babel in the early times after the Great Flood. This book of Jasher describes the Tower of Babel as being at least 9,000 feet high. It gives many more details of the tower's structure. It tells us that Nimrod was not fully human, but he had the blood of the Nephthalim and was becoming one of them, in other words, becoming a giant. The Book of Jasher helps us to have a much better grip on the time sequence concerning the life of Abraham and his father, and where they came from, what life was really like back then. It shows Abraham as a mighty warrior king, who was a real idol smasher, who totally obliterated all his enemies. Abraham is shown to be alive at the same time as Nimrod, and even at the same time as the great patriarch Shem and his father Noah. Quite remarkable, when one considers that Abraham was the tenth generation after Noah. Abraham apparently got his spiritual training at the houses of both Noah and Shem whilst fleeing Nimrod. Abraham was probably studying and learning from the book of Noah and the book of Enoch, which Noah had brought with him on the ark at the time of the Great Flood. Concerning life right after the Great Flood, there are lots of interesting details in this book of Jasher that are not given in any other books about Noah and the Great Flood and his life after that, as well as those who were descendants of Noah and what happened to them. You read about Rikion, who allegedly brought the name of Pharaoh to Egypt. You'll also encounter the nasty character Satan himself, who was called, also called Mastema in the book of Jubilees. See my book, Jubilees Insights. And who was always lurking around the background, trying to cause trouble for Abraham and his descendants. Well, the cover story describes in great detail, spread over many chapters in this book, the amazing story of Shechem. Yeah, because the cover of the, my book, Jash Insights, it's got a picture of a pretty girl warrior on the front, and it's got her brothers are around there with weapons, and they're fighting and destroying their enemies. And of course, that was Tamar. Tamar and her brothers there. Amazing picture there drawn by my daughter Sue. Done a fantastic job with the covers to my books, I must say. Incredible covers. So the credits there, artwork to Suzanne Strutt. And you can see her art on www.instagram.com. Suzanne, with a Z there, Suzanne Strutt Artist, and www.facebook.com.
facebook.com front slash Susanna Strutt Artist. So the cover story describes great detail, in great detail, spread over many chapters in this book, The Amazing Story of Shechem, to which the cover of this book is dedicated. And just two of Jacob's sons totally destroyed an entire city of the Canaanites called Shechem, because the prince's city had forcibly taken their only sister and forced himself on her. Later, Jacob and all his sons came to live outside Shechem, only to have the whole race of the Canaanites come out to fight against them, numbering in the tens of thousands. Oh, I said that wrong. No, Jacob's daughter was called Dinah, not Tamar. Tamar's another story. Tamar was one of the was the wife of Judah, one of the sons of Jacob. No, Dinah was the name of his daughter. She was only 12 years old when she was abused. By No wonder her brothers were mad and destroyed the whole city because of it. Amazing stuff. You go read in the book of Jasher, see how, wow, really graphic it was. The story is incredible. Very, very dramatic. Okay. So later, Jacob and all his sons came to live outside of Shechem, only to have the whole race of the Canaanites come out, well, because they'd wiped out this whole town. Actually, it's not like today with millions of people. The town they wiped out had 750 people in it, barely what you call a village today. But, and they came to live outside that same village later in time, so all the race of the Canaanites came out against them, 10,000 people. Came against Jacob and his 12 sons. Of course, there ended up being a war, and you'll find out by reading my book exactly what happened and who won. As it says here, Shechem was where Abraham, grandfather of Jacob, was resting under a tree when the angel of the Lord came to speak with him. And God promised to Abraham that all the lands that he would see, he could see, to the north and south and east and west, his descendants would inherit. There's a strange story of some of the herdsmen of the descendants of Esau being terrified by hundreds of animal human chimeras with the top part of their bodies being as a beast, bottom part as a human. And these creatures simply rode off with all of their animals, scared the living daylights out of the men, who then refused to go back to that location. Right. So that's a, a summary, synopsis, introduction to my book, Jasher Insights, book one. And next time I'll give you the introduction to Jasher Insights, book two. So I hope you found that interesting, and I would encourage you to get my books like Jash Insights, book one and two. Uh, there are now eight Insights books based, based on Apocrypha books, and two books out of the bottomless pit, one and two, which are about the paranormal and about shenanigans of the military and all kinds of stuff through history has been going on, and still is going on. Very odd stuff indeed, which I think people ought to be wise about and know about. Well, thanks for listening, and have a great new year, and a great year, 2024. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.